a cool new study that gives us insight into the literal worst time to fast. I've had a hunch in this for a while. As a matter of fact, I personally started making some changes to this a couple of years ago and really started making aggressive changes to it within the last year. And it made a pretty big impact. So I'm pleased to see that there's new data to support it. So we're gonna look at two studies that really reinforce why you shouldn't be fasting at this specific time. Now, spoiler alert, I'll tell you what it is. I don't wanna leave you hanging, but you do need to really understand what I'm getting at to understand how to navigate this and when to fast and when not to fast. You should not fast when you feel like you're about to get sick or your risk of getting sick is high. E.g., you go home and your family's sick, your kids are sick and you're like, shoot, I have to live in close proximity to this. How do I protect myself? Well, we're gonna talk about that. After this video, I put a link down below for a free box of Nabibian sea salt macadamia nuts. Literally an entire free box plus 20% off whatever you want from House of Macadamia. So whether that's sugar-free chocolate-covered macadamia nuts, whether that is salsa-flavored macadamia nuts, straight-up macadamia nuts, Namibian sea salt and black pepper macadamia nuts, whatever mac nuts you want, macadamia nut bars that don't have sugar, macadamia nut oil, all grown in South Africa and then processed less than an hour's drive. So check them out down below, get your 20% off and your free mac nuts. So I have to explain something first. Anecdotally and in some some kind of more obscure, somewhat dodgy, realistically, research, we've seen that sometimes when you're fasting during a sickness, it might improve things. And personally, like when I'm not feeling good, when I'm actually sick sick, yeah, I do like to fast. I feel like it kind of like helps me get through it. Maybe I prioritize resources to fight that, but whatever. When it comes down to fighting off before you get sick, that's the most critical time because you're exposed to this and you might have an opportunity to deal with it. So. First, we look at a study that looked at Taekwondo athletes. It's pretty interesting. This was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, and it looked at Taekwondo athletes that were in their 30 days uh, leading up to a competition. So they were training hard, but they were also reducing their calories because they were trying to make weight. Some of them, even intermittent fasting, more than likely. Now, this isn't a direct fasting study, and this isn't the new study that I'm talking about. The new one's coming up. This study was to illustrate a point. They found that as they restricted calories more, their salivary immunoglobulin A, their IgA, went down accordingly. So much to the point that a lot of them developed upper respiratory tract infections. Now, immunoglobulin A is obviously very important for you know, just our immune system and defending from pathogens. So what we see here is as training volume increases, but also caloric intake decreases, yeah, you increase your susceptibility to things. So it makes sense, you're gonna come down with things more. But what does this have to do specifically with fasting? Well, for one, if you're fasting, you're probably restricting calories. So if you are exposed to something and you're kind of concerned, you probably should, if you're going to fast, make a concerted effort to increase your calories more during your eating period, plain and simple. Maybe take some days off. Anyway, let's look at this other study that was published in Immunity. This one was on rodents, but it gives us a real peek into what's possibly happening here. And this one is more fasting. They took mice that had breakfast and mice that did not have breakfast and fasted, okay? They measured their blood at baseline and then at four hours and again at eight hours. And what they were measuring was their white blood cells. They were measuring uh, monocytes, okay? At baseline, these mice had the same levels of monocytes, but the mice that skipped breakfast later on had 90% less monocytes. Now that's not a problem. That's not the end of the world because what they found happened is that these white blood cells went back into the bone marrow to hibernate. That's where they come from. And it's literally called hibernating. And that can actually strengthen and increase the survivability of these white blood cells. So it's not bad, but where it is problematic is, well, when you're exposed to something, you have less circulating monocytes to help defend and label. Now, that's still not the biggest problem. I mean, it's wild that simply not eating decreased this this much, but when the mice would refeed, the monocytes would surge out of the marrow with a vengeance in a high amount more than before, triggering an IL-6 response, inflammatory response, that increased the susceptibility of the mice to illness significantly. This wouldn't be a tremendous issue if you weren't in direct proximity and living conditions and feel like you're starting to get sick. If your body is fighting things off, why would you want to decrease your monocyte count? 
And why would you want to potentially have an inflammatory rebound that increases the propensity to come down with something? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if you've already come down with it, maybe it's a different story. I'm not an immunologist. I cannot really explain that. But I can tell you that if you are exposed to someone that is sick, take the time away from fasting. And if you absolutely must fast, fast in like a one day on, two day off type fashion where you're overcompensating by about 10% or so for the calories you missed on the day you fasted. But if you were to go home right now and your kids were sick or someone you know or live with is sick, it would be a very bad idea to say, I'm going to go on a 24 hour fast right now. It is not the time, even though some people will try to claim that fasting is magic and will help prevent anything because, oh, it's reallocating resources to your body's immune system. No, it's not that, like your body needs fuel for the immune system to function. And we can only guess how much energy demand that is actually taking. So we gotta give our body what it needs. We are not living in the woods. We have technology, we have resources, we have science, we have research now to know that, hey, we can consume fuel and get energy to defend when we need to. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.